there are also uh, properties uh, that are either intensive and or extensive, Mr. Sanders. Yeah. Now, intensive properties are properties of a substance that, regardless of how much of the substance you have, it still has that property. So if I have like a million grams of something, uh -huh. its property stays the, the same. The same as if you had five grams of something. Right. So uh, property doesn't change. Right. With so amount, that, maybe? Right. Yeah, property doesn't change with the amount. So an example of that would be density. We talked about it earlier. If I have a piece of aluminum... Actually, let's use this example, Mr. Okay. Sams. I have a picture here of a liquid, and um, we've got a, a three different liquids. There's one liquid at the bottom. Oops. What did I do? All right, there's one liquid at the bottom, and it is... Well, what? Tell me about that. Um, that one's the most dense, meaning it has the greatest amount of mass per uh, given amount of volume. Uh, and then uh, medium density, and then the green one is the least dense. Now, that substance in the bottom, regardless of how much I have of it, it has the same density. That property does not change with the amount of, su of the substance. So present. if I were to pour some more of this uh -huh. red substance on the bottom yep. in here, what would happen to the density? And the density would stay the same. And where would it go, by the way? It would, the, the substance would flow down to the bottom with the rest of it down there. Yeah, and so actually you would just make a taller stack, and the right. red stuff would go to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that's something to understand. It right. does not change density. Right. Uh, what are some other examples? Color. Color, Color doesn't yeah. change. Yeah, if you've got okay. a red shirt and you've yeah. got a, a, the bolt of fab fabric it came from, it's right. still a Yeah, red. I mean, the small shirt has the same amount of redness as the large there shirt. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Okay, and then then how does that contrast with uh, extensive? Well, an extensive property changes depending on the amount that you have. So a property like that would be mass. If I have a small amount, I might have, let's say, five grams of a substance. Then if I have more of the substance, I have a greater amount of the substance. So it depends upon the amount of material present. All right, so yeah, here is like a mass, uh, some object. They've got right. a little scale, just kind of like what we did a minute ago. Mm -hmm. They had 6.4 grams or ounces or whatever, I don't know what the unit is, um, of a substance. But right. if I were to have a, a bigger piece of this metal, it would weigh more. It would. So that is called an extensive property. Now, so Mr. Sams, um, we've talked about solids and gases in mm -hmm. terms of their uh, uh, shape and volume and that uh -huh. kind of stuff. But... If you were to kind of zoom in yeah. at the molecular level, what would you tell me? How, how's it, how are they different? Well, the gases are kind of spread apart and flying all around. All right. So they're very far apart, folks. Mm -hmm. Doom, way far apart, and they're moving because all molecules are moving. Right. Okay. And then the liquids, they're still moving, but they're kind of attracted to each other a little bit. That's what holds them together. So they're not actually, like, touching, though they kind of sometimes yeah, they're they bumping. But slip, those are close. slip around and yeah. rub into each other, kind of like a crowded street in New York, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And then a solid? Solid, they're, they're, they're attracted to one another. They're stuck together into a crystalline structure. Now, are they moving? They still are moving, yeah. Yeah, and actually, they kind of vibrate kind of back vibrate, and forth. Yeah. And so maybe think of like a, they're connected, and they probably are yeah. closer, actually. It would be more like this. They have a dense packed dance floor. Everybody's smushed yeah, together and just kind of mm -hmm. vibrating back and forth, I guess you could say. Vibrating? <laughs> that sounds something weird, Amber mm. Yeah, I don't know. We'll go there. And now, well, there's our picture uh, zoomed in. I don't know. need it. Here's kind of a cool animation. This would be yep. a what, Mr. Sam? That's a solid. Notice kind of they're moving. Yep. They're vibrating and the temperature's lower. Then you heat it up a little bit. Notice the temperature's going up. And they are um, spread out a little bit. They don't have that nice organized crystalline shape anymore, but they're not flying around like the gases. Did you know that the word gas is a transliteration of the Greek word for chaos? I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool though. That's yeah. good to know. And then the gas, of course, they're flying all around, right? Yep. And we can see that also in this. This would be a gas. They're moving around and around. They're kind of randomly motion and they hit each other. Yep. They're like striking each other. We've got two gases, the blue and the red. Yeah. I don't know what they represent necessarily. Kind of have you ever seen the lottery drawing on TV? All those oh, yeah. ping pong balls flying yeah. around? Yeah. It looks kind of like that. And so that's kind of the molecular view of solids, liquids, and gases. There it is. Well, guys, you've now watched your very first podcast uh, uh, that's content. So yeah. hopefully you pushed pause a yeah, couple of times. Yeah, if you got stuck, push pause, push rewind, watch us again. Yeah, watch us down. again, and then you'll be good. Yeah, we'll see you so, in class. See you in class. Bye.